in attendance, but for all who's here. Um, so it's our city council work session for Tuesday, special city council work session for Tuesday, November 10th. Uh, two topics on our calendar for our agenda for today. Um, marijuana and garbage. Uh, so we wanna, is there a con general consensus we'd like to start with with garbage? Yes. Oh. Okay. That's a good idea. Kristen's right that. there. Yes, yeah, she's here. She's ready to go. <laughs> All right, Joe. <clears throat> so you may recall, and I'm going to have Chris Bell, who's on the call, pull up a presentation, a short presentation um, for tonight. And then all the folks from Pride Disposal, our uh, franchise hauler, are here to answer questions. We did our normal review over the summer, and you may recall that we had at the time uh, rumors of a uh, metro tipping fee increase on the horizon, but we didn't know specifics. So we decided uh, in fall, let's revisit in November. Uh, maybe we'll know more by that point. And then council can get that information and then make a decision about any possible rate increase uh, for next year uh, in time. So that's what brought us here. Um, I've been sharing a lot of information about the proposed tipping fee increase uh, with council over the last few weeks. Um, Chris Bell, our consultant, has been following that closely. And of course, Pride has been following that closely as well. Uh, Metro is scheduled at this point on December 3rd to make a decision, the Metro Council, on whether or not to enact that tipping fee increase, which would go into effect, I believe, January 1st. It is a significant tipping fee increase. It's about 10% or close to 10%. Uh, we can get into those numbers. Uh, it would affect rates. We can talk about that tonight as well. And then we are also hearing rumors from Metro that there will be another uh, potentially significant tipping fee increase July 1st of 2021. So not only uh, one in January, but another one in July. <coughs> And 22 uh, as well, it sounds like. And 22 as well. So these are significant rate increases that uh, have raised concerns in the region among haulers, um, elected officials, and certainly city managers around the region as well. Um, so with that intro, uh, are there any questions before I turn it over to Chris to kind of quickly go through some numbers and then we can answer questions folks might have. Um, ultimately, I'm looking for some direction from council about what would you like to do in terms of enacting or considering a rate increase for 2021 and the timing of that is what I'm looking for tonight. So any questions before I turn it over to Chris? All right, Chris, if you can figure out how to share your screen. All right. You... Is it on there? It is. All right. All right. We fixed that. All right. Fix that. Um, if you recall, we, we had this uh, a work session a, a couple months ago, and uh, we were looking at the projected 2021 rates. And, and like Joe was saying, there was that unknown of what Metro was going to do. And, and so what we proposed is a slight increase um, for, for commercial and, 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 a, and a slight adjustment for Dropbox uh, for, for 2021. This would... Uh, be incurred on or uh, the rate the rate increase would be uh, implemented on Jul January 1st. Uh, and so this right here is the results of the uh, of the rate review for 2021. Um, and again, there was a slight increase for for commercial. We are looking at six tenths of a percent to keep it within within the uh, adjustable rate, uh, sitting at 10 percent. And as we as we explained, we didn't know what the increase was going to be. Recently, Metro came out with their proposed increase, and and there's two components to it. Um, one of them is called the tonnage fee, which is the cost for Metro to transfer, transport, and dispose of the waste, and the other are the regional system fee and taxes. And there are two comp and, and, and they're they're the component of that regional system fee is going to increase by two dollars and sixty five cents on January first under the Metro proposal. And prior to that, on July 1st last year, they adjusted the excise tax by 90 cents per ton. Um, so we've had, you know, within the last 
you know, five months, one increase of 90 cents per ton. The other uh, proposal that Metro is looking to is uh, there is a ton of, there's a decrease in tons um, from 2019, to, or excuse me, from 2020 to 2019, or 2019 to 2020. And to ensure that Metro has adequate tonnage flowing through their facilities, they're proposing decreasing the tonnage allocated to Pride by 5% for 2021. Because, explain that specifically. Well, so they're wanting to guarantee their same allocation to their facility? Yeah, under under the the, the way Metro has established the system, 40% of all tons are are supposed to be flowing through their transfer facilities. And the other 60% to the other privately held facilities that are located uh, around the, the metropolitan area. So in order to ensure that they've got adequate tons going to their facility, and they did this a couple of years, they did this a long time ago to ensure that they had adequate revenues to pay for the bonds that uh, I believe were paid off eight or nine years ago. But so they always... have no debt. Oh, correct. Yeah, correct. No argument left. Correct. Correct. And right. so, you know, you're looking at pride. So they've got a couple of things going. They've got a $2.65 increase on the regional system fee. They've got uh, a fixed costs. And, uh, you know, most people who are in business realize that if you've got fixed costs and you reduce those amount of units that are coming through your facility, the unit cost is going to increase. And pride's no different. Um, so, and then they also have contractual agreements with the uh, landfill that they're currently using with the transfer uh, uh, tra uh, transfer and trucking company that they have, uh, and also the the tip the union wages and everything are going to escalate on January first. So they've got costs that they're going to increase. So they're estimating under the current uh, tonnage allocation with the regional system fee that their inc their cost per ton is going to increase from one hundred and one hundred five fifty five to one hundred ten thirteen per ton, and that's with this proposed metro increase. And so the overall impact to the residential ratepayer who has a 35 gallon cart is around 31 cents per per month. And then for a customer, a commercial customer, if they've got a, a yard of, of waste picked up once a week, they're going to see their their invoice increase by $1.17. And if and you can see on there if they got a four yard, then they're looking at around a four dollar and sixty eight cent increase just for the disposal increase for proposed by Metro. And uh, the next, this is kind of the, a comparable of the cost between Metro and Pride. And one of the things I wanted to point out uh, as we're looking at this is, um, you know, the, the, the 2021 waste volume that uh, Metro is estimating to receive in 2021, 651,000 tons to their two facilities. Pride is looking at around just under 71,000 tons. And, you know, capacity level, Metro can handle 1.1 million, whereas Pride can handle 130,000. Uh, when I was talking with Eric earlier, and, and, and Kristen can, can can chime in on this, um, you know, if they didn't change operations right now, they could handle 130,000 tons. If they had a ramp up, uh, Eric was estimating over 150,000 tons they could handle the, through the facility in uh, Sherwood. Um, so the one question of as far as capacity within this specific area, there's plenty of capacity. If the tipping fee is approved by Metro, the overall increase on on the uh, region, excuse me on the customer is calculated here, uh, and so we're looking at it. I had 31 cents. It's 32 cents. It's a fraction of a cent either way um, to increase that regional system fee uh, and a tonnage increase. So we're looking at a 1.1 percent increase for residential repairs just to pass just just to pay for the uh, Metro increase. And remember that. The, uh, there was no operational increase. So this increase would be specifically to uh, address the increasing tipping fee for Metro. Commercial would increase by that six tenths of a percent plus the 27 cents per collected yard of waste. With that, open for discussion. So this is Keith. Have you um, seen any analysis from Metro explaining why and where? Well, you know, to, to defend their 
um, increases? I haven't. I've asked for it. So I'll let Chris and, and Kristen respond as well. I have not seen anything from Metro to explain thoroughly why they need such a significant increase. I typically get carbon copied on stuff, on information that's sent to, to the uh, local city uh, staff and county staff, and I haven't seen anything. And I'm not aware of anything officially that's come out. Yeah, the only information that I've received is the information that just came out on, I think, end of last week. It was the proposed rates with the kind of two-pager that went along with it that didn't have a lot of information. Um, just this afternoon or late this morning, I got an email about a question and answer session that Metro was going to be holding on the tip fee on Monday, um, but it didn't have any supporting documents. It was just, a, here's a meeting if you'd like to get more information. So as of yet, I don't have any additional information as to the the reasons behind the increase I you know I have some anecdotal information in terms of due to the economy and COVID they've had to dip into their reserves and they need to build those reserves up on the backs of all of the facilities um, as well as potentially raise additional funds for the proposed Metro West facility in Cornelius a third public facility but I don't have the details of like x number of dollars or for each of those things Yeah, I got that email and I responded back and said, please forward the copy of the PowerPoint presentation that, for Monday and any financial uh, def details to support the, su the suggested increase. And I got nothing back. And I pinged Councillor Dirksen as well. I've got nothing back from him either. What, um, from a process standpoint, um, when would Metro's fees be increased go into effect? And how long does, does our partners at Pride need to, um, how much advanced time do they need to put the increase, <laughs> if approved by Metro, um, into place uh, at the same time. So again, um, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe December 3rd is the decision. Again, without a lot of good details and information from Metro, I don't know if it's an immediate type thing or if it probably goes into effect January 1st is my understanding. Um, um, usually, Kristen, if we're going to do some kind of rate increase, we try to do that in late November, early December to give you enough time to implement the billing and everything. So maybe you can talk about what timelines you need, you need for any kind of rate increase, not necessarily just for January 1st. So, Yeah, generally due to the way that our billing cycles fall, as long as we know this is perfect world scenario, we've dealt with other scenarios, but as long as we know, for example, if there was to be a January 1st increase, as long as we know prior to December 10th, because December 10th would be the first bills that would go out to some customers that would have a January billing on it. Um, we have some jurisdictions that sometimes pass rate increases retroactively. We have a way to deal with that if it comes to that. Um, but in a perfect world, we would know, you know, about 20 days before it would take effect so we could get, get it into our system as well as um, notify customers. It, when was Metro meeting to make a decision? I think, it, I think it's going to a vote on December 3rd. Yeah, I guess I'm just curious as to what the messaging looks like then to customers. That doesn't seem like enough time. I mean, like you said, December 10th, the first bills are going out. There's the potential possibly, I guess, to not have the messaging in place for those first bills and, and people are receiving an increase maybe on the bill, but not any kind of special insert or uh, rate increase message on bills. That's, I'm not a fan of that. And is the Metro, is all those signals we're getting from Metro saying they're gonna, if it's a, if something is approved on the third, that it'll be effective January 1st? I thought I read yeah. something somewhere yeah. that was later. 
Right. It's actually the fourth, which I think is just a technicality because the first is a holiday and it's a Friday. So it's the first business day of the new year. It is the fourth on their documentation. Oh, what a great regional partner, uh, Metro. Um, and just so I understand right, if not for this increase in tipping fee, we wouldn't need to be increasing rates to our customer, to your customer. A little bit, a small yeah. increase on commercial, am I correct? Of, of a small increase, yeah, a small increase on commercial and a small increase on Dropbox. Nothing on residential. Correct. Hmm. What's what's the normal? Would that, would that be something we would still be doing now, or would we typically wait though and do that at our normal time? We would be doing that now. Let's say Metro was not raising their tipping fees, we'd probably be having this discussion and just making sure everyone understood uh, what the background was for the small rate increase, and then I would bring a resolution probably at your next meeting to enact that in time for January 4th. Um, the really, the question, one of the questions I have is, do you do that without putting the Metro stuff in there and, and let the process play out? Or do you wait until the process plays out? I, I think there's gonna be a pretty strong effort and I'm speaking more from the city manager's side. There is a lot of concern about this and the lack of transparency and the lack of information to justify this in the middle of a COVID pandemic to raise tipping fees so significantly and then essentially say, we're going to do it again July 1st. So city managers that With I've- zero supporting documentation. Yeah. So if I understand this correctly, we don't know why they're doing it and we don't really know what it's going to benefit, where the money is going. Do we know where that's going or did I miss that? Nope. Nope, you're correct. So if a constituent were to ask us what this is about, we have no answer. Yep. Yep. Other than other than that Metro. Other than blame Metro and and uh, talk go talk to Metro. Yep. So unlike us as a city where we collect money for water or sewer and we can't use that for other things, Metro isn't tied to that same philosophy. No. Collect money for garbage, use it for garbage stuff. <laughs> um, Mike or Chris might be able to speak to this. There, there are certain rules they're supposed to follow within their tip fee. There's the regional system fee that is designated as only appropriate for certain solid waste and recycling funds. The excise tax is for certain things. Um, Mike could speak to that in a little bit more detail. Uh, so there, there is some guidance there you know there's not a lot of transparency i think once they collect the money but but there is you know the regional system fee is supposed to be used for regional education so sherwood gets an allocation of that which is part of the washington county cooperative so washington county collects that money for the cities that are part of the cooperative and does the regional countywide education business outreach um, decals brochures things like that so um, there is some level of that. And then the tonnage fee amount, which is right now around $64 of their current tip fee, is to pay for the operations of their facilities. Um, and then there's a dollar a ton for the community enhancement program, just like we pay a dollar a ton to Sherwood for the community enhancement grant. So there are components of it, I would say, that are tied to specific things. Um, but you know whether all that regional system fee money truly stays in that bucket, I can't speak to that. Oh, and Councilor okay. Young, I think the other kind of big question mark in terms of timing is this proposed Cornelius facility, which I think, you know, I've shared information with Council, a um, lot of questions around that, that has a significant mm -hmm. price tag um, compared to other facilities that have been built. Chris can talk about some facilities in Washington State that have been built that significantly less expensive than what Metro is proposing. And I have a question about, are we raising tipping fees to pay for that that project in Cornelius? So you're basically cutting the allocation to our hauler, and we have excess capacity here to spend money on a facility in Cornelius that, for me, I'm not yet convinced that that's necessary. And then when you throw the amenities that we saw in the survey that I shared with you, it just raises a lot of question marks. And, and this seems very rushed. Uh, 
with a lack of information and transparency and uh, no offense to Metro, but I think that's probably one of the reasons their transportation measure failed is it felt rushed and and they didn't necessarily listen to the business community. And and I say once again, we're in a pandemic and a, in a downturn in an economy. Is it really the time to be raising rates and not telling us why? So so historically, what is the process Metro would, would go through for something like this? What have they done in the past? Because this you're right, this is just totally rushed, totally, there's no transparency, but I'm assuming they have a, a more robust process that they've used in the past. What does that look like? Well, the, So Kristen and Chris, can you respond to that? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, you were gonna say something. Well, they're both in. Uh, Metro. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris, and while you do that, I'm gonna pull up a, 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 some supporting documentation to answer that question. So typically they do, if they're going to make a rate change, they do it in July each year. Um, they were prepared to do an increase this year of, I think, around $8.80, somewhere in that range. And then they delayed it due to everything going on with COVID and the economy, and they decided to postpone it. And so now they're proposing this larger one. Um, in terms of the transparency around that, um, Mike or Chris might be able to speak to that. There used to be actually a rate committee that um, Mike sat on that was about Metro tip fees, and there were public members and industry members that sat on this committee, and Metro staff had to present the background and reasoning behind increases, and then that committee would make a recommendation to council, and then council would ultimately make the vote. Um, I don't think there's been that level of transparency in probably close to 10 years. Um, but I don't know what level there was before when you actually sat on the committee. Yeah, that used to be public, like Kristen said, public and haulers and staff, and sometimes a council member was a contact person. And one of the public members was a fellow that was with a group that watched the PUC and made sure all the state that things were justified by gas companies and stuff. They disbanded it because they felt they, they took it internally. Now they use quote unquote a third party, but it's an internal review of their expenses. And they also took the garbage fees at one point during that 10 year period. They reorganized Metro into several departments and they put a little bit of garbage related issues in every department. Parks, because well, you've got trash to pick up so then they can justify those expenses. It's really hard to track the FTEs also through that. And then the Metro has said over the last year, they were gonna go up about 10 bucks last July, and they want to go up 10 bucks every year for five years to get that up to $150 a ton. So they can find the new facility on the west side, and they want to replace Metro South and Central Health. They said those facilities are aging. But then they want to do a lot of other stuff with that regional system, money that maybe or may not be garbage related. It's, it's tough being a tax collector when you don't even get a chance to say where it goes. Yeah, because I, I was just looking at the, the information you sent out, Joe, on the history of Metro tipping fees. Yes. And, and going back to 1980, I can't see any one year increase even close to this. I think they were, I think, and I'm just glancing at this, but it looks like about $5 is the largest one I can find. And they're usually $1 to $2, maybe $3. So they're talking about $10 nice. a year for three years. This is... If, if any time there's a need for transparency, this is it. Yeah, I noticed the same thing. That exact same thing. Yeah. The, Did they indicate at all what they're anticipating the July increase looking like? $10. Nine, nine, ten dollars. Yeah, months. I haven't heard since this new number for January came out, but originally when they were proposing around the 80 something in July of this year, that was where they were talking about around $10 a year over a three year period. The, somebody was asking about the, the process and, and Metro typically will update their solid waste management plan for, for 10 year intervals. And, and they just recently did this, I believe it was completed in 2018. And on page 93 of that document, um, there's a section of the plan that addresses the necessity investments in infrastructure and goal 16.5 requires Metro to evaluate the feasibility of establishing a publicly owned facility in Washington County to accept and transfer garbage, recycling food scraps, household hazardous waste, and other materials. 
And my question is, where has this study been? Um, what I sent to Joe earlier today is, is a comparable study that, that I completed with a, a uh, AECOM, which is a, a large uh, national engineering firm that did such a facility and where you look at you know, the waste that's going to be generated, the, the transportation to that facility, the cost of that facility, the layout, who's going to be impacted. And, and that study goes to all of the, in this case, it went to the city of Sandy and the local jurisdictions to determine whether that uh, facility should be built or not. And that was a partnership and that was a, a, a working collaboration of, of, of three different jurisdictions to determine whether a facility is needed. And I just assumed when, when, the talk of this facility in, in on Washington County was coming out that there would be something similar, that there would be a study, there'd be sites that were reviewed, the traffic would review the tons, where the tons would be, and there has been nothing. Um, and the speculation is that facility is going to be anywhere from 60 to a, over $100 million. Um, the facility that we looked at in Sandy is adequate enough to, to handle the, you know, this waste. We're looking at 12 to 20 million dollars tops, and I had a household hazardous waste facility. It had everything that uh, that Metro is looking to do. So you've got a really variance in between 20 million dollar a usable, realistic facility and an 80 million dollar facility. And again, the overall impact uh, on the ratepayers, you know, on a 20 year facility, on a 20 year bond, which is around 10 dollars um, per ton just for that facility. Not to not to mention the operational cost. So that's the process that we would typically expect to build a facility of this magnitude. And that hasn't, we haven't seen anything. Yeah. I, sent a, I sent an email to Metro today asking for their study. And <laughs> it was just very also a question on what, what they're going to do with the uh, tonnage cap as well, because right now they've got a 40% for themselves, you know, that's in their code. And they have two facilities. If they build a third, do they stick at 40 40 percent, or do they then claim they need 60 percent, which then would decrease the allocation to all of the other private transfer stations even further? Mm -mm. But you've already demonstrated, at least with um, two facilities in the report, that they're only being utilized at 50 percent load. And if that's similar to the other facilities in the region, there's no justification from a capacity standpoint from building a new facility on the west side. The, 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 one the comments that we've made to them in regards to this west side facility is that the west side of the region is somewhat underserved in terms of public self-haul as well as household hazardous waste because right now, except for the regional collection events that they do every year, in order to drop off hazardous waste, you have to drive to one of the two Metro facilities, Metro South or Metro Central. Um, and there's no public self haul um, for general residential garbage on this side of the region. Um, so the, the comments that we have made to them is if you want to truly fill a gap, then you should build a much smaller scaled down facility that can handle the household hazardous waste and the public self haul, but that is not designed to handle large commercial haulers because that need has been met by the private industry for the last 20 years when Metro did not step up and build that facility. And now they're trying to build a facility on this side for those materials when the private investments have been made because Metro hadn't stepped up and done that years ago. So I think, you know, there's a little bit of truth to the, the need on the west side, but I don't think it's the $120 million Taj Mahal facility that they would like to build. They could build a much smaller scaled down facility to handle that public need. And, and to be clear, it's it's a, trans, it's a um, transfer facility, but it's also a recreation center. It's, it's, a, it's a lot more, there's a lot more amenities that they're trying to put in the community, which may be great for that community, but these are two separate things. And, and they should be approaching um, the public separately on those two issues, not trying to hide it in a uh, yeah. uh, the, 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 city of, the city of Portland had a literally a city charter amendment that failed because they wanted to use water money for so those kind of improvements. Right. Um, and they were slapped down and said, no, water, water needs to be spent on water. Um, so should garbage only be spent on garbage? Um, that's what has normally been done for the most part, from what we can tell, but 
So, Chris, the, I think you were talking about that 2018 solid waste plan that Metro did. Yes. Is that was that adopted? And is are they is that six, section 16.5 that requires them to do a feasibility study? Is are they bound by that, or is that just a recommendation? It's you know, you know plans are solid waste plans are adopted. And and when you go through, you always look at when you, you update the plan, you look at the last 10 years and said, OK, what were the needs 10 years ago? What was completed? What's still outstanding? So it, it there's nothing in these plans that requires Metro or any other jurisdiction to absolutely do them. It's kind of a, a guiding um, memo. It's a, it's a guiding document and it can it can move and change the you know, as as ne as necessitated by the elected body. And that often happens. But their own guidance says they need to do a feasibility study. Yeah, that's yeah. when you're spending this kind of money. I, like I said, the the other the other issue if, with with capping tons, um, especially in Washington County, if if you understand that the growth uh, in in Washington County, you know, south of Hillsboro and north of Sherwood is going to be happening. Um, if you cap that tons, then you're requiring, you know, the haulers to drive into Metro Central. You know, when the closest facility is either in Sherwood, it's at Hillsborough Garbage, it's at Forest Grove. And so you're requiring those haulers to make additional travel time and, and, and an additional cost. So the irony is that well, the way Metro's established that the, the tonnage caps is they're requiring haulers to drive more miles, which is in conflict with their transportation plan that's trying to reduce the miles traveled. Well, it and Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't they recently do a study where they looked at those how the waste is hauled around the county, looking to improve efficiency, and they found that the haulers were already doing it very efficiently? I'm, I, I, I recall the study. I didn't see the specifics on there. I just remember talking with the, uh, the individual haulers are going to be impacted, and they said the same thing. They didn't. They looked at rings, and you can do a ring out. And, and estimate, but when you're stuck in traffic, um, you know, and the run cost of those trucks is 100 bucks, 110, um, and plus all of them are CNG. You've, you've got a limited amount of fuel to take that day. You've got time and windshield time, which is incredibly expensive, and and so Metro kind of capitulated on that reduction in in, in uh, or, or, or they capitulated to the sense that they agreed with the haulers and said, yeah, you know, it would be better for the system for them to go where they should be going. So I'm not at all happy with Metro. Um, shocker. The one thing that you hope they would do well um, and be transparent about it, they're not. The reason they were formed originally. Um, hopefully we'll learn more Monday Who's who's invited to that Monday morning meeting? I, I'll forward it out to all of council. Anybody can call in. Yeah, the meeting invite or the email was sent out blind copied. So I was I I sent it to Joe. I was like, did you get this? <laughs> Who got this? Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I, I, I forwarded it to all of our city and county partners just to make sure they were aware of it. Um, but I don't know who it was sent to really. Yeah. I will forward it to council as we you know. So, Joe, what is it you're you needing to know from us? Whether to hold off till after that December third date? You're you're muted. You're muted. I I heard Kim. I, I'm on. Not uh, Joe. Oh, no. I got kicked out for a while and had to come back in and for some reason, sorry about that. Um, if you put the Metro tipping fee issue aside, our consultants recommending small increases in roll carts and commercial. Um, one option is to uh, proceed with that. The downside to that is if you just do that in Metro does a tipping fee increase, you could be doing another rate increase on top of customers right away. And I don't think that feels really good in terms of at any point. Um, so one route is to do a small rate increase, consider one in December, I can bring that back and, 
and go that route. The other is to hold off on anything and let this play out. Um, we'll know soon enough what's going to happen and then come back with whatever the rate increase is in December. Um, in terms of resolution, it may not be effective January 4th because of timing, but so that to me is at least two different options is to just not do anything and wait until Metro makes a decision um, or do a small increase. And the small, the small increase that we talked about for, for the, the commercial rates, I mean, we, we went through that detail, I think, back in July, if I remember yes. right. Um, I mean, my two cents is we should move forward with that. But given where Metro is on this tipping fee increase and the, it feels like the opposition is building pretty strongly out in Washington County with the cities that I really think we need to wait and, and get involved in the opposition as well. So, uh, Doug, get your hand up. Yeah, thanks. So uh, I certainly don't want to do two back-to-back -back increases, nor do I want to preemptively do an increase before Metro does. Um, so to me, I'm wondering if we could write the ordinance in such a way that it's uh, there's yeah. like a contingency built into it, right? Like the rate will go up by this amount no matter what. And by the way, if Metro passes this other thing, it'll also go up by an additional amount. And then we could communicate that that way too. So I'm going to let Josh chime in. It's not an ordinance. It's just a resolution. So you can Sorry. do this in one night. That's, that's okay. Josh, is that something feasible from your standpoint? Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I think I can't think of any reason why that wouldn't work. That's, uh, that's a good idea. Renee? Yeah, I was thinking along the same lines as Doug, but then the other thought that I had was um, if we didn't want to go that way, was going ahead, going ahead and doing the small increase, but in the increase letter mentioned that there could be another because of the tipping fee, but that might get some of the, the community members riled up enough to start complaining as well. Kristen? Yeah, if I may, um, just to clarify a little bit on the potential Dropbox increase, um, the proposed increase that's on the table, uh, regardless of what Metro does, is on the operational costs, and the disposal component of drop boxes is a pass-through. So, um, you know, if the disposal rate goes up in February, then the disposal rate goes up for a customer. Um, so in terms of that piece, that could be worked on regardless, again, of what Metro is doing with the disposal component. Um, and then with the proposal that uh, Councillor Scott brought up, if we were to go that route, again, if Metro doesn't do anything, residential wouldn't necessarily need an increase. So you would only have to kind of approve that if Metro passed the rate increase. Um, and then on the commercial side, I guess what I'm saying is that would, from our perspective, that could work relatively well, because right now I think we're scheduled to go to a council meeting on December 1st. So we would know after December 3rd, when Metro held their council meeting, that would still give that would give us a week in advance of billing to get those notices out. So people would actually have them in hand before they potentially received a bill with a January 1st new rate on it. So just my two cents on that. Tim? Sorry, I keep forgetting about that little uh, hand icon. Um, given the lack of transparency, how confident are we on the the rate they're actually proposing i mean could it change you know between now and the first so if we try to do something preemptive in an ordinance do we even are we even confident we know the number at this it's point a resolution, not an ordinance. i'm sorry it's a resolution not an ordinance or i'm sorry resolution are we even confident we know what that what it's going to actually be so in theory you know following doug's um idea it could be um, a, a resolution saying, if Metro does nothing, the rates go to this. If Metro does a 50% of their suggested increase, it go, we raise rates to blank. If it goes to 100% of what they're telling now, it can go to blank. <coughs> right, Josh? We lost Sorry, Josh. Couldn't, find, couldn't, couldn't find my mute button there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, you could do something tiered like that, I guess, um, if 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 uh, you're happy with that 
granular level of accuracy as far as what you, the rate increase would be. Um, if, if Metro does something completely unexpected, then you may not have a tier that seems appropriate, but you could do that, something like that. Yeah. I mean, if, if that handles the most likely scenarios and then something else comes out of the left field, then we got to come back to the table anyway, so. Right. And I would just add that I think at some point this would go to a council work session before they would bring it to a council meeting to vote on. That's typically the process. So I would hope that if they followed that normal process, that there would at least be some idea of how council feels about the proposed increase, because I've been in work sessions on other topics where they've surprised me and asked staff to go back and work on something more and not take it to a vote at a future meeting. So um, I, I would think that one way or the other, there would be more certainty about, yes, we want to move forward with this or no, come back with a different rate or take it off the table altogether. Uh, Doug? So if Metro does do this and we end up doing the, the rate increase, I would like the messaging to the rate to the to the payer to the uh, to be very clear and very unambiguous about where this increase is coming from and what's driving it and what where it's not coming from. Um, so I, I just want to get that out there. Tim. Yeah, that that well, two things on just to amplify what uh, Doug said. Uh, yeah, that has to be absolutely clear, and it can't just say, you know, tipping fees because no one knows what that is. It says Metro is increasing fees. Um, I also go back. Sorry, let me just. We have a great partner in Pride, and I don't want them to to get thrown yeah. under the bus on this. Exactly, and I I would add, Joe. I've talked to you about this before. You know, at some point we need to revamp our utility bills to clearly lay out where all these these fees come from. Um, but I, I I have a question more for Keith on this. If we pass something now that anticipates an increase, like we've been talking about, from a political standpoint in the region, what does that look like to Metro? Is does that they look at that and go, oh, well, they they're they're already assuming it's going to pass, you know, they're already ready for it. So, I mean, are, are we creating? I think, a we can, I think we can certainly do a staff report um, that puts a couple of cuts. And their side. I mean, yeah, I and I, and I, that I would best. believe the message is starting to get back that the region is not happy with this and wants more information, which is why we got some of us received the email about the Q and A on Monday. That came out of the blue, um, and I know calls have been made. I know city managers that have called metro officials and i'm anticipating electeds will probably be doing the same over the coming weeks so okay is there is there any sense that this that there's a rush to get this done at metro in december um, because they're going to have a new council makeup starting in january no no really <laughs> really try to do something before they get new voices around the table come on tim please shame that on would never happen right I, mr mayor i bring it up because that gets to you know how rushed are they going to be and are they going to have additional work sessions to work through it if they're trying to get this through yeah but they're I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of heat on them. I just there. I mean, I know the metro mayors are not happy. It's 25 city leaders um, with a complete lack of information. Could maybe a suggestion? We could do a companion resolution, basically saying that we don't support uh, the fee increases. I think it's forwarded on to uh, Metro. I mean, we can even do that um, next week. Yeah, right. you could do that on the 17th. In advance. And, um, as soon as possible. Yep. Yeah. Um, great concern about the lack of transparency on all these topics. Um, 
I mean, we're trying to put something together like that with the Metro mayors. I don't know if they're, I mean, they're, they're trying to be nice and just say, where's the detail? Where's the evidence? Where's the argument? Um, and so far, the only thing that the, the mayors of the metro area receive is the email today for a Q&A on Monday. That's where all the answers are going to be. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be shabby. Just a hunch. So does so, Jill have what he needs? Yeah, actually, I have enough information and, and ideas and perspective to move forward. So um, I think just to recap, we will draft a resolution for next Tuesday, a week from tonight, basically raising... Um, significant concerns and probably, and I'll talk to to folks about, and Josh can help, opposing this because of the lack of information and transparency. And then we'll also work on something for December 1st to implement rate increases as, as we've discussed. And just keep a very uh, strong eye and watch what happens over the next few weeks. So, and I will continue to share information and I know the mayor will, what he hears with regional mayors and pride has been very good at sharing information they they receive so i think we have a strategy so that's what i was looking for cool yeah and by the way thank you Kristen, for spending that 45 minutes on the phone with me um educating me on the the details of how this stuff works i really appreciate it i'm happy to do it thank you okay. all right well, we'll let you guys go. Um, unless we'll you want to stay, you wanna... unless you want to, you can stay on. It's public. You know, you're, you're I actually was a little bit curious about the other topic, so I might stay on. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay on, or you can watch it on YouTube at the same time. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, we'll move on to recreational Thank marijuana. <laughs> so we uh, have an initiative that passed and um, which we will need to um, adopt, but that we have some questions. Um, I've had, had three meetings on this already. Um, so Josh, do you wanna take the lead? Sure, yep. Um, so as, as the mayor mentioned, we're here talking about the, uh, the ballot measure that passed last Tuesday. Um, and this is kind of an opportunity to talk about the impacts and next steps and also answer any questions that uh, counselors may have. So there's a lot of, a lot of issues um, to discuss, but I think I'll start with taxes and then we can go into talking about um, the land use regulation and other regulation portion of it. Uh, as counselors are all aware, but uh, for the benefit of anyone watching on YouTube, there are state taxes and local taxes on recreational marijuana sales. The city was previously not eligible for any of the state tax revenue because of the prohibition on recreational marijuana facilities that was in effect in the city. Um, because this has been or, or will be repealed, the city will uh, be eligible for that again. It's shared revenue. There's a formula that's used to calculate how much the city gets and it's very difficult to project the amount that the city will be receiving because there are so many variables. There's the obviously the, the sales volume, how much total revenue is brought in by the state. Uh, there's a, the formula uses population and number of facilities in the city, which of course could vary over time. But most importantly, um, the other thing that was on the ballot in November was uh, measure 110, which among many other things, made changes to how the statewide uh, recreational marijuana taxes are allocated. And specifically what that did was it put a cap on the amount that is allocated for the various things that it has been allocated for um, over time. And everything over that cap is now going to be allocated towards drug treatment facilities that were established by that ballot measure. That cap alone, um, uh, we, David Bodway did a little bit of uh, um, estimating, and 
that alone means about a two-thirds reduction, somewhere in the ballpark of two-thirds reduction, <clears throat> compared to what we had been previously expecting that the shared state shared revenue amount would be. But importantly, that also means that we're not going to see the benefit of the dramatically increased revenue that the state has been seeing in the last year, uh, which you know may have been due to the pandemic. We don't know exactly, um, but we won't see any benefit of that because there's a hard cap. Um, so there's some indication that the legislature may make some changes to how that all works. Um, it w as it stands now, it would be an enormous amount of money that would go into just the drug treatment facilities, um, perhaps maybe more than is needed for that. Um, but of course, once the state legislature starts to tinker with that, it's not at all clear that their outcome would be to the benefit of cities. So uh, a, a, a big unknown, um, um, in terms of how much our state tax revenue would be. But I think the long story short is it's probably going to be less than we were expecting. The good news on the state piece is that there are no restrictions on the use of that um, revenue. The, state, the city can use that for whatever it wants. Any questions on the state piece before I move on to the local piece where we'll need a little bit more direction from council? Josh, I have a question. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead, Kim. No, you go ahead, Tom. Well, I was just going to ask, I know when Measure 91 passed in 2014 or whatever it was, there was some questions and some additional legislation that happened after that passed, right, to reorganize or redistribute some of those tax revenues. And so I, I think to what you were saying, I think that's probably on the table, I imagine, that people are going to be looking at that because, like you said, I don't know that that $45 million cap is uh, entirely reasonable for... Uh, across both of those um, uses for that money, so I'm yeah. I mean, so that's certainly possible, right? Now, what is the briefly, if you could, what is kind of the the mechanism for doing that? How does that legislation or that those discussions even take place? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, the legislature has made a number of changes um, since Measure 91 was enacted, and they've done it through a different, a couple different mechanisms. Um, for a while, I'm not sure if they still have it. They had a, a joint committee uh, that was, um, you know, both chambers of the legislature working together on those issues. I'm not sure if they'll do something like that again. Um, but long story short, it's it's a it's a bill that gets developed and proposed and gets voted on to make those changes. And I think. To your point, um, Councillor Garland, I would ha I would hazard a guess it's more likely than not that there's going to be some sort of change, if only because this is there's a, a lot of money available here that wasn't available before, and we're dealing with a situation where there's a a well there's always a need for money, but maybe a more need for money uh, than than normal due to the pandemic and other things. So almost certainly there will be some sort of um, look at changing that. Yeah, I was pretty surprised when um, David sent out the estimates. I know, you know, there have been a lot of talk online about what the projections might look like from the state shared revenue for like the 2021. And we kept saying it was about 69,000. So I was really shocked to see that we now estimate it to be like 25. And that was really the driving force. And what was pushing was all this revenue we were going to get. And now <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we won't be unless they remove that cap. So a little disappointing. Well, and the, and the pamphlet language for that measure was not clear. I don't think many voters understood that that the, they were funding those mental health programs by taking money away from cities. And schools. Uh, and schools. Out, yeah. Yeah, it's it's an easy bet that um, Salem will be redoing that formula. Yeah, I think the schools will will probably get made whole. I don't I don't hold out as much hope for cities. Yeah, we're clear. Yeah. And, and just, to, just to give you folks a sense of what the state is collecting, since uh, June, they're collecting a little over $15 million a month in uh, marijuana tax. And the measure that passed, it was everything above $11 million so Everything above $11,250,000 a quarter. So, yeah, so basically in yeah. one month, they've already over-collected to where everything on top is going to be moved to that program. Yeah. So there's, there's just like 
Just like there's the never-ending battle over um, gambling revenue, there's going to be a never-ending battle over this revenue. And if, oh. um, okay. So that's okay. that piece so of it. Talk about, let's talk about local taxes. So the good news is uh, Measure 110 didn't do anything with local taxes. Uh, that's a... It, now, of course, the legislature has talked about making some changes to the what can be done about local taxes so that that could still happen at some point um yeah, although most of that conversation has been a good thing about raising the, the limit on how much those local taxes can be so right now under the state law we are limited to a three percent local tax and that is the amount of the local tax that sure is that maximum three percent the ballot measure the local ballot measure um that restricted those funds to being used for public safety purposes. So those funds are restricted. Um, so there were really two questions when it comes to the local tax revenue, which is how will those funds be used, which you don't need to decide tonight. Um, but then also how 